Alright, st stream is up. Welcome to uh, episode 5, Mobile Matinee. We got, uh, got a Hermano Spice Boy. Russell, you want to say hello? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, hold on, let me turn on Adblock. The one that I linked to that you can yeah. watch without a Korean cell phone uh, has ads, which is funny because it's a public domain movie, so... And uh, we got John Hansen with us. All right, so hope you guys have ad block. Um, I do have ad block. But yeah. Okay. Um, I think I have about to turn it off. Hold on. No, maybe I don't have ad block. Oh, well, I'll get it. Oh, no, I, I usually I turn it off for stuff I care about. But this guy putting public domain movies on YouTube and then trying to monetize it. Uh, I'm, I'm Brutal. Getting, not, him not getting money for that. Yeah, I just put that long. Um, did you uh, change the link, or did you post it somewhere? I posted the second one in the group chat. Oh, uh, okay. Are you able to watch this one without having to prove you're not a young boy? Yeah, without having to prove I'm not a young boy. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got here? John, do you want to intro it? This is uh, Phantom from Space. It's a movie about um, a phantom. Who is uh, from space? By uh, W. Lee Wilder. Yep. His name's Wild Lee Wilder. Alright, uh, want to give us a countdown? <laughs> um, I gotta... Wait, hold on. I gotta put zero. There we go. Okay, so three, two. Hold on. Did you say one? Yeah, I didn't hear one. John. <laughs> John, where'd he go? What? Did you, Dude, say, did did you say one? Us for a second. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? We didn't I, hear I, one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you just, just said two. two. We, must have cut out. we just heard three, <laughs> two. And then, and then nothing. It was just silent. It was <laughs> silent. I thought you were trying to juke us. <laughs> no, I must have cut out. Right. Okay, uh, three, two. One, go. Here we go. Some good clouds. Damn, look how fast they're spreading. What's that fast time move for Tom? Why'd you choose this movie? Uh, basically because I went on... Uh, the list of public domain movies and there was another movie called killers from space i was like oh we should do that but then i saw the riff tracks did it like not that long ago i was like i don't really want to do the same movie so i just typed in from space again and then i saw this one <laughs> in other words it was very carefully curated in no way was it the first result it began after sundown. Time, 7.15, as Flight A, Coast Patrol from Travis Field, was returning to base. When the nightly Air Force transport pointed north toward Japan via the Great Circle route. Why don't movies just explain Travis stuff like this C, anymore? The Navy and Coast Guard maintain their usual round-the-clock vigil. And from the equator to the Can you guys uh, check the, the stream and make sure it's going? Swept the skies with eyes that never sleep. Mm -hmm. yes. Time, 7.19. An unidentified object was picked up... We're getting a miles feedback from somebody. Point Barrow, I think it's Russ. Hold on. 7.27. Unidentified object confirmed at Fairbanks, Alaska. Heading yeah, I don't know what south, that is. Southeast, 170 degrees. <laughs> what the Height, 75,000 feet. Estimated speed, 5,000 miles per hour. Yeah, that's better. White warning. Yeah, I don't hear any feedback now. But yeah, did you see his, his, uh, the stream up? Unidentified object, 200 miles due west of Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, that sound is so much louder than everything else. 170 degrees. Height. 60,000 feet. Estimated speed. Rest of you, take the screen. Down to 3,600 miles per what? hour. Yellow right warning. 754. 
first interceptor flight airborne. Point of yeah, it's gone. Looks like. 80 miles due west of San Francisco, the video's up. California. Uh, it's playing an ad right now, but we'll see. Unidentified object past point of interception. Red warning. 811. Morro Bay, California. Height 50,000 feet. Yep, we got video. 2,000 miles per hour. 815. Santa Monica, Is California. the whole movie going to be like this? To start a movie. <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> that would be great. A monster. <laughs> it's just this guy. <laughs> basically, he wrote a... Uh, he's like a modern J.R.R. Oh, Tolkien where he like, explains what everybody ate for breakfast and stuff, except for just describing Red what dudes saw on radar. <laughs> By 825, they, they do the sing Angeles songs when there are the hobbits. Communications stuff. Commission reports of strong interference with radio and television reception began to pour in from the beach area. The monitors went to work immediately. A bunch of people telling us they don't know what the fuck they just the saw. Vicinity of the disturbance. <laughs> Pinpoint direction finding devices <laughs> began to trace people. the trouble to its source. <laughs> That's the biggest radio controlled car of all time. This is it's actually a pretty common model around that time. Uh, we're at Ocean and Beacon Way, and apparent strength too. Uh, bearing 27 degrees. Over. Mobile 1 from center. Roger. Over. Mobile center from Mobile 7. Over. Go ahead, Mobile 7. This is Mobile 7. Mobile 7. Oh, what? Beach 4. I wish it was Mobile 7. They did. Three, did they really just say degrees. Mobile 7? Mobile. Yeah, yeah. Mobile. Center, mobile. Roger. Mobile. Center, oh, Roger. mobile. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? Mobile mobile is this seven 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 our seventh mobile that day? I think this is five or six. Point of interception five. estimated three miles north of the this. For two Repeat. releases. <laughs> the Three seven. miles north, sir. Uh, mobile 7. Mobile this is 7. Mobile 7, Roger. Mobile 1, Roger. Mobile 7, Roger will go out. Roger will go. Okay, Charlie, let's get moving. <laughs> the whole movie, every single piece of dialogue has Roger and Over in it. And Charlie. Charlie, Roger, we're gonna hit this woman. <laughs> I think the other one was higher quality, but again, Rid is not one young boys watching that movie. That's why this one's permitted. It's just too blurry to make it. I wonder why you have to be 19 now to see something. Maybe it's a language. I don't know. Man, it really is that blurry. Roger out. <laughs> Roger out. Out, Roger. <laughs> That's the majority of the lines. This man, he just kept coming at us. It was awful. I don't know. He was wearing a suit like a diver. Hurry, please. They're hurt. Charlie, you better wait here. I'll go down and take a look. Why don't you just take my job, get in the car? A young woman's hysteria became I don't want to do it anymore. It's all the same. Roger. At the beach. A young hysteric woman. There was woman. no sign of the mysterious intruder, and little could be done for her husband and their friend until the ambulance arrived. Then a lot could be done. That would be fine. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, we're just taking another reading now. What happened down there? The police took the girl and one of the guys to the station. What about the other one? Well, he's on the way to the morgue. That was her husband. You're right on the button, Charlie. 44.7. Report back to Central if you find anything else. Glad all the exciting Charlie, stuff happened off screen so we didn't get too good right here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pick you up right here in about an hour. Where are you going? Police asked me to drop by the station and sign a report. This is great. Well, the only character we know so if far is Charlie. You know where to look for the body. And Roger. And a hysteric woman. Welcome. Like I said, we were just starting to eat and we heard something tracking through the sand toward us. I looked up and couldn't see anything. Then Betty screamed. At what? I thought you couldn't see anything. At first we couldn't. Well, yeah, I'm blind. This guy started toward us. I'm blind okay. now. How should I know? He was wearing some kind of a helmet over his head. He could have been a deep-sea diver or anything. All right. 
After you saw this, this your standard deep sea diver mugging me. Well, he jumped up. Ed, that was Betty's husband. He yelled at him to stop, but he just kept coming. I never saw anything like it. He didn't say anything. He just kept moving. Again, in. because I'm because blind. you're blind. Did he say he attacked you? Oh, well, we didn't give him a chance. Ed grabbed a piece of wood and took a swing at him. That didn't stop him. He caught the end. That's that's all I remember. Just because a man's taking a walk is no reason to slug him. Besides, you don't look like a guy who frightens so easy. How would you feel if somebody with a crazy helmet with pipes sticking out of it came at you in the dark? I'm telling well, you, this crazy helmet. I know this sounds, sounds crazy, but there wasn't any head in that helmet. No head. No head at all. It's the truth. I think you need some coffee. Some sort of headless helmet. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so he, it was, it was nighttime. Okay, and they were at the beach. Down, oh, I didn't put you out. No trouble, so yeah, having a classic. Yeah, getting ready to eat. They saw a dude walking towards them. They told him to stop, and then they took a swing at him with a piece of board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because he had a deep sea diver out with it, they thought it would be like oh, right, right. not that painful. It's just kind of a nice way to swat a boy. Not that the helmet could have uh, made it so he couldn't hear them saying stop. Or maybe he needed help. Fuck him up. I am not time to fuck this Martian. This deep sea diver motherfucker with no face. Get him. Come at that. Why? That's what he happens then, isn't it? Yeah, I board with him. You do, huh? Now, Mrs. Evans is a good-looking woman. What are you trying to say? What is he trying to say? <laughs> he's trying to trick him into admitting he's not really blind. Where? Yeah, I got it. I'll leave right away. He's been on a murder. Near the beach. Keep an eye on this guy until I get back. What are you doing? You'll stay right where you are. At least until Mrs. Evans feels well enough to talk. What do you want from her? Oh, I just want to see if your story checks with hers. After all, you went to school together, remember? Alright, in the back uh, rub. I'm here, buddy. <laughs> you say there were no witnesses, huh? None yet. Anything missing? I don't think so. Cash register wasn't touched. Except his life. Get a breakdown inventory as soon as you can. Except these what about people's people? lives. Boys are working on them now. Sorry I'm late. What kept you so long? The lieutenant asked me to hang around a while. Well, what's the score? Ah, it looks like one of those things. Pretty girl, older husband, young boarder. Kid claims some guy without a head knocked the old man off. Yeah, don't say anything else. <laughs> Same story every yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't say. No, he's gonna have to do better. Like, he really gave oh, him the whole talk. story, didn't he? I took a reading about ten <laughs> minutes ago. Kind the radiation is going out with the tide. What about the radio phone? It's working fine again. I just got a call from Central. They said Mobile Seven picked up some new trouble northeast of here. Here we go again. Hop in. This shit every day. Hey, I've got a question. I, I wonder whether that car is actually just the only car they could get, and then they wrote it into the movie. <laughs> Maybe they wrote the entire movie around the fact they had a giant radio there car. There he is there. Live <laughs> next what... door. Well, yeah, hey, Mr. Nelson. Answer. Come here, will you? I'm Lieutenant Bowers, homicide. You found this buddy? That's right. He must have just locked up for the night when this happened. How do you know that? Well, he usually does around this time. What were you doing here? I was sitting home watching the fights on TV, and all of a sudden the thing started acting up. What has that got to do with it? Of course, you don't know this set. You know, it wouldn't work at all when I came home to supper. Then all of a sudden it cleared up fine. So I thought, well, I'll get set to look at the fights again, and all of a sudden out it goes again. So I thought maybe the battery station down here was overcharging the circuit, and so I just have to take a look, that's all. Hey, don't you ever quit work? What's up this time? Another murder? What are you doing here, Hazen? Same as before, still trying to track down that signal in the Hey, uh, does that stuff work on TV, too? Well, it has been for hours. What'd I tell you? What's the matter? Seems to set one on the blink. Well, at least we know we're on the right track. How'd you make out with that border? 
<laughs> You're still sticking to a story. The guy had no head. Well, I'll be seeing it. So long. Right. Let's go back and talk to your TV some more. Come on, Charlie. We're getting out of here. Talk to TV talk. And so the communications team resumed its mission to track the mysterious interference to its source. Why is the guy like hiding in all these shots? Like it's like not hiding in the By stationary and mobile units. It was determined that the disturbance was moving in a northeasterly direction. By 10:34, Mobile Center had pinpointed the disturbance at the edge of the Huntington oil field. And they barely have time to investigate these multiple Unit homicides with all this interference tracking they're doing. <laughs> this is way more important. <laughs> it's screwing up the television. Yeah, people can watch their hey, TV. Hey, Charlie, do you see what I see? Yeah, the oil field. How are they going to find out about the murders? Trouble's burning up. Now we're only one way to find out. Is this some kind of, like, government agency? Yeah. They're probably with the Air Force. I mean, it showed all those. Oh, yeah. Air Force stations. Now, come on, you can't fit it all on the young boy. Or can you? Very funny. You can pin it on a young boy. I can do what I want. Yeah, I can and I will. I already have. Oh, Lieutenant's waiting for you. Thank you. We're getting little Bobby Johnson. There's a wheel. You heard the man. Communications Commission. So we just kind of, uh, it deferred to happen very often. Never anything like this. It's on the move all the time. You mean some harm with a transmitter in a car? It's not a transmitter. We don't get a definite disturbance, just just interference. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no idea what it is, huh? Not yet. How are you making up? Not so good. You were here when I questioned that boy about the murder at the beach. Did you get anything more out of it? Yeah. Come on with me. You might want to see this. All right. So you're just about done. Thanks. You can go now. This is Daffy Duck. <laughs> just about done. Are you sure this is what the man looks like? <laughs> what do you say? They can't show the lower half. I had a three toilet paper <laughs> roll at the same time. <laughs> it's like dynamite. There's no head sticking out of his eye. I'm positive there wasn't. And there's no head. Well, it was dark. I couldn't swear to it. Thanks, that'll be all. You mean we can go now? <laughs> yeah, for the time being. Just stick close to home. I don't want to see yep, you. Yep, this does control. prove you're innocent. Come on, man. Kind of changed your mind about those two, haven't you? Yeah, I guess I have. Hey, look, bring in the old man, will you? Because they have the same story. Don't tell me you believe this story about this, this whatever it is. <laughs> I know it sounds as phony as it ever did. But, oh, sit down, will you please? You are the uh, watchman at the Huntington Oil Fields? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. I've been with the company for over 22 years. Sir. Yeah. Will you tell Mr. Hayes and here exactly what happened? Walter, like I said before, I was just closing the gate for the night when I saw this fellow coming up. I was never so scared in my life. Yes, go on. Well, it wasn't the man so much as the suit he was wearing. Well, he wouldn't stop when I hollered at him. He just pushed his way right in there through the gate and, <laughs> and walked right up to the tank. So he I hit him with a board. Did you try to stop him? <laughs> well, he was much too close to the tank. I was then he killed my old man. So I thought I might call for help. And just to cut to the shack, the tank blew up. Oh, you should see this sign. Yeah, uh, sir, can you give us a description of this man? How would you say he was dressed? Well, sir, like I said before... You may be find us a movie where he does those things on screen. Uh, not outfit. No, they, they just talk about it the whole time. Oh, he was a giant of a man. Uh, and he had tubes sticking out it's of like if you made a movie out of all the deleted scenes from another uh, movie. Can you tell us what his face looked like? Well, <laughs> sir... Though you got pretty close to me, I could swear... That'd be pretty cool. You could probably make a bunch of different movies. Now, if you saw this man again, would yeah. you recognize him? I mean by his outfit. Oh, I'll never forget that sight if I live to be a hundred, sir. For which I won't. Would you say this is the <laughs> It's the olden days. Sure, that, that's him. Thank huh? you very much. You may go now. Uh, right, I've sir. done a lot of drugs. Okay. Well, Higson... I wonder what, what kind of movie now? you could make by just mashing up footage like that. Descriptions check, all right. Um, this could be pretty dope. Kind of Plan nine. High altitude well, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like in well, like today's, you know, like when you have the ability to really significantly sample from a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
I guess you're right. I don't know. Oh, you could probably do something like Kung Pao pretty easy. Yeah. Of course. He could have been dropped by parachute. You mean sabotage? I think we better wire a report to Washington and see what they say. Yeah, you can use our teletype. I took off the only place to at least be on the lookout for something unusual. Hey, wait a minute. What about the press? Oh, I don't think they know too much now. You better keep it that way for a while at least, till we find out whether a friend is still around here. Well, if he is, I think we can find him for you. My hunch is that he's, he's carrying something around that's causing all this disturbance, whether he knows it or not. Pretty good hunch. Yeah. Kill that page one lead. They let the border and the girl go. Hmm? How do I know? I don't Maybe give a shit. The <laughs> suit and the husband. Mm -hmm. I never nah. gave a shit. No, no, not a chance. Not a chance of uh, Yeah, it's not my job. Hey. They're making a blanket release in the morning. Hmm? Oh, there's a guy from the communications commission in there now. <laughs> yeah, I'll call yeah, you back later. He's an idiot. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> I gotta go back to Sunny Scuzzy. Come in. Sorry to interrupt you, Lieutenant. Yo, what is it, Jim? There's a teletype cam for you. Oh, thanks, Jim. We're waiting for it. That was fast. Well, here's our answer. Looks like they never sleep in Washington. Just to contact a Major Andrews, care of Dr. Wyatt, director of the Griffith Institute. It's kind of late. Man, I'll give him a call. While you're at it, I'll go out the car and check in with Central. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's a story. Well, no, you can't join the Army. Institute. Washington, they told us to contact you here. <laughs> How was this? Very this is terrible. What do you think, Doctor? You should be ashamed of yourself, son. When I see something like this, I understand why you gentlemen might have thought sabotage was involved. Lieutenant, are you sure there were no traces of this saboteur, this X-Man, found after the it's explosion? Oh, what? <laughs> is this, is this a precursor to the X-Men? Didn't come up with a thing. This well, then there's a strong possibility that he might have perished in the explosion itself. This mutant. I doubt that. We're pretty well convinced this man is carrying this registered Marvel Comics this trade on it. <laughs> According to the last report I got, there was a definite disturbance about three miles east of the oil fields, sometime after the explosion. Well, then if he's alive, you should be able to keep an accurate check of his whereabouts. Not that easy. As a matter of fact, we lost contact about three quarters of an hour ago. Maybe you Despite the fact he literally emits a radio wave that all of us can track. In that case, there's nothing much my department can do to help you. And I guess it's up to us. Unless you have some suggestions. Well, let me think out loud for a minute. It might just be that what we've been talking about so <laughs> I'm far, going to have pizza and for this <laughs> we'll call him, ties in with what the doctor and I have been discussing. That is very possible. I don't know whether you know it or not, but somewhere around 7.30 this evening, our radar networks picked up an unidentified object off Point Barrow, Alaska. They traced it clear down to Santa Monica before they lost it. Santa Monica? That's where we first picked up our radio interference. Yeah, right at the scene of the murder. Well, then, if all these things tally up, we've got some idea of how our man got here. You mean that he came in some plane? In that case, somebody would have seen it land and take off again. Or did it crash? No. No, we don't think it was a plane. No rocket or jet that has been built so far can attain the speeds of 5,000 miles an hour, particularly for such a great distance. And maybe we're on the wrong track altogether. Couldn't your unidentified object yep. have been a meteor? <laughs> they travel at a terrific speed. Yes, fast enough for most of them to burn themselves Man, these up are so the moment they hit the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> no. And did it occur to you that <laughs> meteors are not very likely to travel horizontally all the way from the North Pole? I can see why you needed to be over 19 for this. But it wasn't a meteor. <laughs> it's pretty risky. It's a flying missile of some type. How do you figure this phantom ties in? We're not sure that he does. I don't care what you say, but it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Does he have his legs up Anybody on the chair? Yeah, he did. Dude, he always has his legs up. If you notice. Well, he I'm afraid of the like floor. Tucked up to his chest. <laughs> the floor is lava. Excuse me, Dr. Watt. Is that yeah, Lieutenant here. Bowers in here? Oh, uh, yes. What is it, this? There's a Mr. Wakeman from the Chronicle here to see you. Wakeman here? Now, what does he want? 
Well, there's only one way to find out. Before you go, <laughs> just go ask him. Get I out of here. You've met my assistant, Barbara Randall. Well, hello. Hello. It's Mrs. Randall, Lieutenant. Uh oh. I'll be right back. Oh. oh. Barbara. Oh. You know the major? Of course. And this he is he senses the, the tension in the air. How do you do? Let him know. Well, he I said a trap to cause tension just so he could break him down. Just so he could break him down and say, ah, she's married. Be able to pick me up for a while. <laughs> Besides, I had some work to do in the lab. That's uh, the uh, just in the 50s for you. I have to get out of here now. All right. So I shouldn't have come up here. But I gotta get you a wrangle on this beach murder. And your whole department is shut up. Look, Wayfin, will you stop bothering me? There's nothing to say. If you got an exclusive story from that Evans Damon or Board, then you know as much as I do. Yeah, but that does still doesn't explain anything about the guy without a head. Come on, who is it? Your guess is as good as mine. Do you mean you let those two kids go without knowing that? I don't buy it. Well, I did. Well, then you must have an awful good reason. I bet you're trying to tie it in with that other murder. <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. Don't tell me. I'll get my story somehow. Oh, if you want to know how things turn out, read the Chronicle in the morning. That's right. I get in touch with Charlie in Mobile One and have him call for me here. Okay, honey. Won't you come up with anything? No, we're just briefing Barbara here. It's just amazing. No, nothing's happening in here either. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. She's still married. Mrs. Randall. It seems the press knows as much about it as we do. Well, let's hope they don't come to the same conclusions. A few lurid headlines, and every fool in the country will be seeing phantoms in space suits and men from Mars all over the place. Yes, I can't imagine. I wish we'd see a man from Mars. Mars hysteria is difficult to check once it gets started. That's why we've got to move forward. Prefer if he had a head, though. Well, from the looks of things, I, I wish we would just see beat. anything a cartoon, some animals. As soon as I heard it. Maybe go back when that guy was just reading out. The radio. Oh, there we go. Oh, there oh that's a little bit better. Mobile units patrolled the streets and countryside. They covered an area 35 miles square. They have two cars. They're always parked on a hill when they show that shot. It's always just like a dang. Everyone on the job was ready to move on the first signal from the communications commission. At 0800. No one wouldn't come for several hours. Let's watch. Brickyard at 160th, moving toward oil fields. Contact your units. I get them not there. Units one and seven. Building. Units one and seven. Walt Disney is on the case. We're oh, that does kind of look good. <laughs> <laughs> moving due east. Close in. Repeating. Strength four in appearance at 160th in your field. Close in. Slowly, slowly building to the climax. It's gonna be gonna be some action soon. I'm glad Tom was not here for this. I don't think he could take it. Oh shit! Oh, wait, wait. <gasps> oh, was that it? Was that? We got a... aliens. Or maybe I don't know. <laughs> Looks like the fucking Michelin man. Just got here, trying to set this up. What gives, Jason? It's in this area, all right. I brought the Geiger counter. Thank you, Doctor. Walk, Let's just start shooting. Well, it doesn't register as far as the oil field. I think we'll do better if we split up. Man. Right, Lieutenant. You two go that way, Lieutenant, out here. Vince, Joe, you follow <laughs> You two go away from there. We just saw the guy. Oh, no. forget it. <laughs> He's just going to take a car? Everybody left. Yeah, I know. It's a... <laughs> they didn't think to leave anyone behind. They're Geiger countering too. Hey, hey, look at this. Yeah, points this way. Hey, Joe. <laughs> points this way. Is that how a Geiger counter works, Joe? <laughs> walking, chucklehead. Yeah, it points towards aliens. It points towards uh... a. <laughs> <laughs>
Is this the rest of the movie? <laughs> I hope so. This, this is great. The most action seen the whole movie. Look, oh, he you doesn't even know. Oh, you heard him. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Is that how he Again, killed? like, I can really see why he had to be 19 to watch this movie. Oh. Did you see that violence it's that just happened? Graphic. It's schoolyard violence. Yeah. That's the type of violence that children could emulate. That's right. That's with me. It's just how... He just comes up behind him and pushes these guys. The regulations in Korea are just so strict, man. <laughs> Gotta verify you're 19 to watch this. There's a man pusher around here. He pushed me right in the chest. Oh, he pushes the crates. He pushed these crates off. I love they have that guy your counter sound the whole time. <laughs> Available. Wow. Oh no. Oh, he's completely invisible. Oh, he's yeah, naked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why would he wear a suit at all? He just has to fold his laundry. <laughs> Does want to make a mess. Oh, now he's naked in there. Alright, there's nobody in here. Possible we saw him come in. This is where it gets graphic. We won't get very far. Don't touch anything until we check the fingers. Over here. He left his suit and his helmet. Hey, let's spread that thing out so I can get a good shot of it. Go away, you fool. What's the matter? For your information, that's a Geiger counter and it says hands off. I think you'd better wait outside. Uh, I think you're already a little bit too close. That's also how the Geiger counter works. It says hands off. Yeah. It's straight the hands off territory. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> this threshold? Charlie, you know where we can pick up a lead line box in a hurry? That's well, not well, that. Have one. Yeah, they're already way too close to it. Everything's <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're all, they're all irradiated now. Well, boys, we're all... That's not the only thing that bothers me. Did any of you get a good look at his face? Not me, he's too far away. Well, I did. Unless I'm mistaken, that helmet was empty. Hey, where Hold am on. I going to put this stuff? Oh, put it in Dr. I didn't look at the Right. That's an existential well, question. That's a... <laughs> no, that's all right. You can't handle that. No, it's okay. Go ahead. It, Go ahead and touch it. Don't worry. The Geiger yeah, guy is really yeah. more of a Geiger recommendation. Uh, you got gloves on, right? Leather, yeah, leather gloves <laughs> protect from the radiation. Any luck? Not a sign of him. The boys are still searching the ground. For what? Nobody knows what he looks like without that outfit. Don't bail on that, Major. The reporter got a flash picture of him, and I just happened to borrow that film. It's on its way over there. Right that felt like somebody caressed my butt. Send us a print as soon as you can. Sure. Is that, uh, are you is that sure one of you guys? Or? We want to make a few tests at the lab. I mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm not offended. I gotta get that guy. It's I just us here, you boys. So this alien can uh, breathe air, knows how to open doors and locks. Doesn't like how it's closed so long. Maybe he does. Did he just leave something behind? He left his clothes, it looked like. Did he climb in there with his clothes? I mean, he latched no, it again. I think he took something, but it looked like he left one thing behind him. The only time something has been not overly explained. Good evening, Doctor. 
Yeah, yeah in <laughs> the entire movie. Saw you drive in. Good evening, Barbara. Hello, Hello Bill. I see we got here just in time. Anything new? Lots of excitement, but that's all. Major, you know We chased an alien around for a while until oh, we got oh, naked. Yeah. It's a pity. Yes, a nice looking dog you've got there. What's his name? His name? Venus. Say, Bill, I hate to ask this, but something important has come up, and I wonder, can we borrow Barbara for about an hour or so? I suppose so. Uh, of course. Darling, why don't you go and do the shopping? Here's the list. I hope that Mark dog's really the main character. I may as well. The movie would be really interesting, even if the dog just doesn't do anything special. We just follow him around for a while. Honestly, you could just film a dog wandering around and pretend that it's accompanied by the invisible. Yep, the dog gets it. Oh, he's gonna snap that dog's neck so quick. <laughs> They went through a lot of dogs filming that scene too. Because of the good snap stuff. at the right way. <laughs> he bites the air and there's blood like starts dripping out. <laughs> She's yeah, like, what the the fuck? Oh no, he found grandma's ghost. <laughs> The vast majority of action in this movie is literally You're doors right, opening. Doctor. There are no fingerprints anywhere. On their own. That was new technology back then. Hey, don't touch anything. They just invented fishing line. Our friend Mr. X left this suit at the oil refinery. You mean you were that close to him and you Oh, they're touching it now? I'm afraid so. That's up to yeah, the uh, We blew on it. The radiation is gone. Oh, again, they got the lip gloss. They blew on it. <laughs> We're wearing leather gloves. Hey, you better have those sharp. But I just bought them. Well, uh, here, try this knife. Now I've only cut myself. That still won't cut. Let me try. He just tries to rip it. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. I thought I was hurt. <laughs> Why don't I try it over a Bunsen burner? Usually I can rip That's... through nylon. <laughs> Yeah, that's his. That's his standard of comparison. Nothing's going to happen. I poked it in the fire. And nothing happened. Mm. It doesn't burn either. <laughs> Let's take a look at it under the microscope. Look, it's magnetic. It's magnetic. Here, Radioactive. And apparently indestructible. <laughs> Thank you. Can't see. What's the matter? You tell me. Take a look at that weave. That's a good weave. What weave? Quality stuff. There is none. This material is one solid mass. Matthew. <laughs> You're right. It must be some sort of plastic. No. I'd say it's a metallic substance of some kind. Well, I've seen a lot of interesting alloys, but never anything like this. Let's try an acid test. All right. Go ahead. I kind of want to wear it and dance around a little. Careful now. We'll only take a drop or two. It repels acid like a raincoat repels water. Why, there's no reaction. Well, Major, this looks as though we're going to be here for a long time. But what is it that they're implying they're doing in that lab? The I was going to think, what, what experiments can they really do already? 
Ted Byrne in it? Yeah, they're, they're just moving. That guy, that guy tried to rip it. What else can you do? He tried to rip it with his bare hands. Resulting in the body expanding twice its size and death, of course. I know. And it must withstand pressure and counter pressure. Also, it must be so super. Now he's just touching it with his bare hands. Yeah. Let's see what it is that's left in his breathing apparatus. Well, how are you doing? Oh, don't worry, they waited uh, the gas for the, tank the whole half life. Down to 11 methane. Ordinary marsh yes. gas. What's the rest of the It's already a pretty good touch. I can't figure it out. It just doesn't respond to any of the usual tests. Well, how could anyone exist on that combination of gases? You and I couldn't. But apparently, Maybe she someone could. can. Oh. Doctor, are you trying to say that our X man doesn't breathe oxygen? And hasn't the metabolism of a normal human? Yeah, he's an X man. <laughs> then how, how is he breathing air? He doesn't have his yes, suit on now. I'm not sure the movie's ever going to address that point. I honestly. I hope they will. They over explain everything, so. So far, yeah. What happened to the radio car? Well, they found it. They don't have to put the radio up there anymore. They I just take it off. Right here in this mm. Obviously, he needs it to survive. I was under the impression there was one that was done. Where he was sure to be recognized. As it is, he only took it off when he was cornered. But if what you say is true, how can he exist without it now? Let me put it this way. It's like a patient in an iron lung. Sometimes one can, can be removed for hours at a time without any effect. Explain. Exactly. And yeah, I see they're, they're explained that. Here. And that means sooner or later, he has to get his breathing apparatus back or die. I don't understand. Well, I've got an idea. <laughs> if we were to return the whole to where he left it, I don't understand. Find <laughs> some fish. Speaking. Why do they have her there? Yes, yes, yes. Is she a scientist or don't something? <laughs> She's like, Hello, Major. Apparently. Still at it, huh? She's just like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to She's doing scientist things. Now. The picture? Just moving uh, the water from one to the other. Yeah, hold on. Dropping the acid. He says the picture the reporter took of our men didn't come out. I was afraid of something like that. Now that's Major, how you make it in the Hello. No. No, we didn't find any fingerprints at all in this clothes. Did you find any? Uh, too bad. Hello? Will you wait there, please? <laughs> we don't know what to make of this either. Have you heard from the communication boys yet? Well, let's hope they turn up with something. Major. <laughs> I was hoping they'd just get a third on, phone call. Everyone would be on the phone at the same time. He insists upon seeing He does? Where is he? I told him to wait in the lobby. Good. Hello? And it's our friend from the press is here. Don't worry, I wouldn't dare let anyone in on anything. At least not till we get something concrete. Right. Why did they need to show us that he was there when they just said he was there? That's even no other friend. Show him like looking at stuff. Wanna come along, Doctor? Yeah, he's nosy. He's like playing with him with toys. Developing his character, John. Come on. He likes pushing buttons. It's a metaphor, and it's literally oh, what he's doing. Hey, guys. <laughs> nice lot of gadgets you got here. We think so. What's on your mind? Well, I was wondering if you might let me take a couple of pictures of that suit you brought up here. I'm sorry, we can't do that. Oh. Well, now, look. I got a wonderful picture of the guy running in the shack, and the lieutenant stuck his nose in my business, and what do I get? A blank. <laughs> She's gonna figure it out. Oh no, she's gonna get got. Is that you, Doctor? Oh, he's gonna step in it. Oh. Whoa. That's a human foot. Yeah, he's just a naked, invisible guy. He's got a man foot. Oh no. Now she's alone with him. Grandma's ghost. You must have some lead on this guy, otherwise you wouldn't have brought that suit up here. Well, let's just say we were curious. Hello, Bill. I 
back so soon? Uh, isn't Barbara through? I oh, know. hi, Mark. Uh, she's still in the lab. Why don't you go out and see? Thanks so well. The sequel to X-Men and The Room. <laughs> Are you Listen, getting indecent with the chemicals? I'm not alone. Someone <laughs> is in here with me. I can't see him. He locked the door and has the key. I'll break the door down. No, Bill, don't, please. You better get help. You mean I'll come all the way up here? What's so bad down. about breaking the door down? I'm afraid so. Good night. Yes. Good night, Mr. Wakeman. You might Good start night. on the invisible guy. <laughs> better to start on him. You've seen him before, how he spooks. It's true. Yes, He'll run away from us. He'll might push someone down. He might push him right in the chest. Come quick. What's the matter? What's the matter? Where's Barbara? In the lab. The door is locked. Oh, it would be quite a tumble. I thought you said the door was locked. It was. She's gone. Oh, cover the main entrance. That's the only way anybody could leave. I will. Well, in that case, we would have seen her on our way up. Then she must still be in the building. We'd better split off. You didn't take his breathing out of medicine. It has to have to live. Was it there? Yeah, the that'd probably be a pretty good thing to hold that on to. Was that was their going theory. She's not being she? carried by an invisible Barbara, <laughs> <she? laughs> Barbara! Barbara! She's kind of like slumped off. Later. You alright? Any sign of her? Not yet. She must be around here someplace. Now you stay here. Watch the main entrance. And I'll check the basement. Was. He was like, just a yeah. foot out of frame. <laughs> I'm sure he could have seen him. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. But she said she was locked in. And she couldn't see who did it. Can you explain that? No. They're standing pretty Not close yet. to each other. <laughs> Let's huddle up, boys. <laughs> we all gotta make it in the shot. Hold on. Get on in here. Get back to drinking just three Red Bulls at once. Who are you? Don't come near me. I warn you, don't come near me. <laughs> He's really good at one, scissor talk. One, two, one, <laughs> two, one, two, three. I will not do that with you. <laughs> Thank you to Little Caesars for a large pepperoni. <laughs> one, one, two. 
Yep, see, you're not making any sense anymore. <laughs> I'm glad that's what startled her. <laughs> Him going visible. <laughs> Why did she grab that originally? No, please don't. Yeah, I don't know. It just helps her ride, I guess. Sounds like my Griffiths kind of If only we'd given that dog the gun. <laughs> the dog shoots him. Time delayed it falling apart. That's how powerful he is. I think that dog's gonna get got. Dog's gonna want to be in this movie, please. Take the dog with you. Mobile Center for Mobile One, come in, please. This is Mobile Center. Go ahead. Get hold of Major Andrews or Dr. Wyatt at the Institute. I want to talk to either one of them. I will do. Stand by, Mobile One. Is that a window talking? Dr. Wyatt speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Hayden. Yes, we're still at it. Uh, lots and lots of excitement, but nothing definite yet. Have you anything to say? The trouble seems to be just what was that? gone. We got flashed <laughs> in the direction just of the observatory. Did <laughs> you see that? Was that the only one? Yes. It's a, it's Attack a three. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. The damn powers ought to be here any minute. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I was blurry. briefly blinded. How long will it take you to get up here? <laughs> Good. See you then. Good. I'm not getting up. Thank you, gentlemen. Put it down here, please. Barbara, bring that cord in over there. Now you're going to see... Thank you. Oh, I have to resort to ultraviolet light in order How to show you what... How hard could this in the film that they already need to do two jump cuts? As you can see, it has reduced itself to this liquid and it is in an evaporating stage. Pretty the tasty too. Is in the lab. Mm, very toxic. toxic. We're breathing it in. We already knew it was radioactive, but now it's airborne. This is amazing. All the radiation in this suit would, why it'd be fatal to a normal human being wearing it. <laughs> of course, <laughs> it's certainly figured out. They were touching it, <laughs> like fingering it. Yeah. It was, it was evaporated and they're breathing it in. <laughs> yeah, this is lethal. They're touching it with their bare hands. Fuck. <laughs> they just spoke. It just blow it all up. Under normal conditions? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Randall did see the... It's fine. We wore leather gloves. And the masculine hand. Under ultraviolet light. How do you explain that? I don't know, but the human body is composed of various elements with a carbon base. I cool. Yes. Now, suppose we maintain the same chemical composition in the body of the X-Man, but substitute silica for carbon. 
Sure, that's <laughs> like cool. Exactly. And I think you know it. Uh, no. <laughs> if it were subjected to an atmosphere foreign to its origin, might appear invisible to our eyes. Are you trying to say, Doctor, that we're, we're not dealing with a human being? I didn't say that. On the contrary, all the evidence points in the opposite direction. It's super a superhuman. With an oh. far superior to our own. How can you tell? You said that at the exact same That's time bad. as he said it online. I know. <laughs> like our own fingers and a thumb opposing. That alone is a cool. sign of intelligence. And he comes like from a cool. civilization <laughs> that has developed adequate space travel. I hypothesis that he actually has about three thumbs. Earth. We have nothing yet that can reach. Even another Think of how many Blackberry Pies you could ruin. That could account for the unidentified objects picked up by radar a few hours ago. My theory is that the spaceship, or whatever it was that he came in, operated on the principle of magnetic like rather this. than atomic propulsion. Wavy kinds and of movement. <laughs> somewhere in the outer limit, met with the condition where the Earth... It's a wildly ineffective way to travel. ...and it fell into the ocean. And that he... Managed to save his life and reach shore. You really can pick up. At which point he was accosted by a man with a board. With no the board. <laughs> he was asking for help. We were on his trail from the minute he left. He did what any sensible man would do when he went to a dark beach and approached a couple having a private dinner with their old man. <laughs> Killed the man. <laughs> Which you told us is very As we would. <laughs> I've got to make an official report to headquarters. Are you willing to be uh, supported that injured several of us? A creature from another world? Killed an old man at a convenience store for apparently no reason. Not the only <laughs> planet capable of sustaining life in one form or another. You can't quote that. All I've got to go by is some footprints in a hand. That isn't much. No fingerprints, no description, no nothing. And we're after a killer. Has it occurred to you that our ex-man has no apparent motivation for his acts? And might therefore not be an intentional criminal at all? You have a point there. Hey, wait a minute. He might be a good guy. Come Give him a chance. The young He's only killed two people so far. The first <laughs> so? So that could have been enough to provoke the strange creature. And the same could have happened with the second murder. <laughs> and the third. You really give him a couple of freebies. And the fourth. Evidently our man sensed the presence of some gases. Which he thought might be utilized in his breathing apparatus. Yeah, that could account for his presence at the oil refineries, where something went wrong causing the explosion. Too bad he got wise to it and took off his uniform, or we'd have been able to catch up with him by now. Still on their radar. No, he didn't utter a word, but I'm convinced he was trying to convey a message to me. He kept Tapping out a code. I, I wrote it down. Let me see that, please. Doesn't make sense. Well, it may be based on some so recipe for cake. Really I was trying to tell us something. Those were pancakes. Why did he run away? He says extra butter, no syrup. Carrots? What the Side fuck? Of what dead the man. fuck? <laughs> Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. What do you think of this? Hell. Hazen must be crazy sending out stuff like that. I guess so. Why don't you try and get a hold of Wow, it is really dirty. <laughs> Mobile One from Mobile Center. Come in, please. Mobile That's One from Mobile Center. Come in, please. Mobile One from Mobile Center. Come in, please. I just want you to know I'm interested. Hey, that said. I'm not saying no. <laughs> Stay here by the car. I'll go tell Hayden. Yes, Colonel Powell. Of course, I'll mail you a complete report first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, and I'm I'm awfully sorry to disturb you so late at night. Right. Good night, sir. He's around here. This invisible guy. He was in the car. How do you know? 
I was talking to Randall outside when I heard Central calling. Before I could get over to answer, I saw the door. I left him alone with a known murderer and ran here by Coward. For all we know, he could be trying to send a distress signal to his home base, wherever that is. Well, let's hope he doesn't get through. We've got enough problems with just one of those guys. Well, at least we know he's surrounded in the vicinity, and it's obvious what keeps him around. Of course, he's got to come back for what little gas there is left in his helmet. And when he does... Oh, please, the most important thing is to take him alive. If we can only make each other understand, there's no telling how much science can profit. I'll go along with that, Doctor. But I've got to make sure that once he's cornered, I won't be able to hang on to him. I think we're all agreed on that. I've got this oh, can of so we can from see it, see it too. He's in an alien world. No doubt we are as frightening to him as he is to us. crazy for having an object at all times. The thing is to keep <laughs> calm at all costs and do nothing to provoke him. I said I'm not crazy. <laughs> Immediately, a simple Just plan to trap the Phantom went into operation. All obstacles to his entry were removed. To erase any possible suspicion, the doors were left unguarded. And inconspicuous <laughs> electric eye equipment was set up. Everyone pretending to be a makeshift <laughs> control board. <laughs> that would be inconspicuous where a police station is just of the Ghost completely <laughs> now, there was nothing to do. All but doors went. open. Now we just gotta walk. Everyone with their <laughs> leading to the institute is blocked off to make certain no outside. Oh, is the institute the plans or interfere in any way? That's a big idea. Yeah. All right, nobody's allowed through here. Who said so? Lieutenant Bowers orders. Oh, my God. Is he up there? He might be. He just explained yeah, that they're not letting anybody through. They have to the show. Chronicles. Sorry, bud. I can't leave. Oh. Let's see. What about them over there? We didn't even... Hey, you over there. Me? Yeah. Aren't you the guy from the communications outfit? Didn't I see you down at the oil fields a couple hours ago? What of it? You got anything to do with it? Well, you'll have to ask Lieutenant Bowers about that. How can I if he won't see me? That's, That's the point, question. dumbass. Sanchez away. Well, I'm convinced. Oh, uh, I'm convinced. Oh, I think he is gonna try to finagle his way back in. That's what I think. Well, he's gonna fuck everything up somehow. Sure thing, he has time. He's gonna go in there. They're that gonna think cheap. he's the guy. <laughs> yeah, well, how long can you sit on the edge? <laughs> gonna put him up. Put him in a room with all the all those gases and then just die. The dog just snaps his neck. The dog snaps his neck. Well, if everything else fails, <laughs> we still have Venus here to help us. I was gonna say, where's the dog? Uh, right on cue. Bushes. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Is this thing getting you? Oh, no, no, I'm just thinking about public reaction to all this. What if they laugh at us? <laughs> take this you serious. Take that again. Oh. Look at those snow prints. You know, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a pilot. And then after I got my well, boss said that I, I would have day. difficulty with such now I vision I problems I and anything. whatnot. And being an alcoholic made it easier to get to the academy. <laughs> They'll leave her alone again. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> chance that you think uh, the girl's gonna get knocked out again. Yeah. Oh, you're right. She's <laughs> definitely, the, he's, he's gonna the show up. Oh, the, yeah. they, got, they got the journalist. <laughs> oh, he fucked it up. I told you. Well, it's the reporter. Yeah, it sure is. He fucked it up. Oh, 
Oh. Right when everyone's distracted. Oh no. In the shit. Bear. Oh, that don't make any difference. Come on, what's, what's up? What's going on? This one now. It's got her. I think you're right about the dog being All the right, human. Right, you better tell him. I'll reset the water. I think the dog is gonna get killed though. I think no, the dog's gonna, gonna suplex tear out his... him, I don't think the dog's gonna suplex anybody. Look! If and I he's back! God fucking damn it! Same spot! <laughs> I am so tired of this happening to me. What are the chances he returned to his helmet? Don't you understand? Can't you speak? I Can't love you! you. No. <laughs> the beautiful words that you tapped out with those scissors convinced me. Listen, everybody. He's in the lab with me now. He's in the lab with me now. Phoenix, be quiet. <laughs> the dog knew. The door is unlocked. Hurry, he's having trouble breathing. I don't think he can last much longer. And please, don't let Phoenix get at him. And walk in quietly. Venus will rip his throat out. We trained him to do that as a joke. As a joke. It's unbelievable. You see, there's nothing to be afraid of. Nobody wants to hurt you. I've tried so to reason. Maybe just wait there. I feel he understands, but he can't speak. Wait a minute, I'll try his code. I think I remember it right. Better plug in the ultraviolet light. Oh shit. There he goes. I agree. Oh, you scared him. Got him. Oh, his neck just got snapped. Did you see that? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Just the way he's... He, he did that to himself. Oh. He just looked back too fast. He just <laughs> double ticked. <laughs> I told you somebody's neck is getting snapped. If it's not the dog, it was the reporter. Everybody knows. Dog's next. He's gonna fold the dog in half. The dog is <laughs> gonna be Oh. Uh. Just tears oh, his no. legs off. <laughs> I told you to trust me. Plug in the lamps. There's an outlet here.
go go around. <laughs> Get away. If I hadn't seen this with my own eyes. Go down, down the stairs, leave me there. alone. Get the dog away. Oh, he is naked. And he's kind of a pudgy fella. Amazing. This coat again. Look. He's trying to speak, but no sound is coming out of his mouth. What Look at Venus. She acts as though she hears him. <laughs> yes. Dog can hear sounds that we can. His voice must be beyond the range of the human ear. Maybe he's screaming. Well, ask the dog to translate. He's suffocating. The dog starts tapping out with the scissors. <laughs> He's gonna fall. Oh, oh, oh he's man. gonna fall. You gotta feel so good, guys. What a way to go. He's completely smooth. <laughs> oh, wow, he's pretty smooth. We won't need these lights anymore. In death, he has become visible. Damn a normal out. body. Body gonna disintegrate too? That's no, they're just gonna let it rest up there for however long it, it takes to decay. <laughs> let this be a lesson to you all. Nope. Oh, there it goes. Yep. <sighs> Breathe it in, boys. Ah, victory. That's the smell of success. We're looking at it as an excuse to not file any paperwork. That <laughs> <laughs> is a man who Dog has the sense now to breathe that stuff in. Dog's like, should I go over there? Or? Should I? Should I, should I lick it? <laughs> is it wrong to lick it up now? Is it or? wrong to? <laughs> Will I get in trouble? I'll just I'll just wait enough. So he came here, wherever from, and right before our eyes, his body went through the final phases of life. <laughs> They're all crying. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Let none of us forget that we watched a man melt tonight. It's morning. More of the stories don't mess with her. We just watched a man suffocate to death, scared out of his wits, and fall down. Yet he got a reporter to bury. Wow. <laughs> it answered all the questions. <laughs> well, I guess just throw into the woods. That's great. That really was a wilder flick. Yep. Oh. Miles Wilder, Bill Wilder. Bill Wilder. Steve Acton. Tom Daly. Sandy Sanders. <laughs> Sandy Sanders. Harry Landers and Sandy Sanders. Who else do you need? <laughs> All these names. <laughs> Dick Sands? That was the Phantom. Harry <laughs> the Phantom was itchy old Dick Sands. I wouldn't call it a masterpiece, but I'm not saying it's not. I mean, there's just so many ways you could take that movie, you know? Like, it's got a lot of depth, a lot of ambiguity. We, we kind of needed Tom to explain some things for us. John, yeah, uh, yeah we needed Tom to explain stuff. John, what do you, what do you rank this movie? Uh, I would say that was a three-bagger. Uh, three bags? Three bags, and then... Uh, one pair of leather gloves so you don't get radiation sickness. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>
<laughs> Russell, uh, how, how would you rank uh, this movie? Uh, I would give it probably like two bags and a dog. <clears throat> One dog to watch One a guy evaporate. Yeah. Respectfully. Yeah, I don't know. It, it was a little risque for uh, Korean standards, apparently. Yeah, an invisible naked, naked guy man running down. around. He snapped the guy's neck. It's a pretty explicit You guys concept. remember that? <laughs> you guys remember? Yeah, he did. He's killed, he, he did snap the guy's he killed three people. So he might have deserved to die. Yeah, don't, don't feel too sorry for him. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the tone of the movie you know, brought us to the point where we were actually <laughs> feeling as though it was justified, right? Like... <laughs> They, exp- they gave us a moral explanation. They're like, no, you know what? They didn't really care this about this. Like uh, Night of the Blood Beast, where Night of the Blood Beast, you were supposed to not empathize with the monster. But then the monster like never actually did anything wrong. Yeah. In this movie, that monster just it, killed a it, bunch it of dudes. He kills people. He kills one guy in front of us who's just like a reporter. He's just like a nosy Took reporter. A it's, not, it's not like he's like a reprobate in any way. He's just the journalist. And he he just didn't ask yeah, he's like, just doing his job. <laughs> the next step. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, like sometimes when you're on a That's foreign planet, and you gotta sometimes we all kill find a way to breathe. You got to kill a few reporters. Wow. We get it. We've all been there. All right, guys. That was uh, Moving Matinee number five. Yeah. And.